Good morning, and uh, welcome to our worship service here at Trucksville Church. I'm glad that you're with us on uh, this day uh, as we uh, continue to celebrate uh, post-Pentecost and as we share in our children's moment today and talk like a pirate day. So I hope that uh, you will be interested in that. Uh, we're going to begin our worship service as we uh, listen to uh, our uh, bells and we uh, share our morning prayer with invite you, if you would, uh, to turn in your red hymnal to page number 750 as we share in our call to worship. We're going to read responsibly uh, Psalm 19. Uh, Psalm 19 is uh, tied in the lectionary with our lectionary reading that we're sharing in, in the sermon, uh, the James uh, chapter 3 uh, passage. Uh, so this is uh, Psalm 19. I'll read the regular print, and then Dr. Steve will lead you in the uh, bold base print. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night bears knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and runs its course with joy like a strong man. His light is from the end of the heavens, and his circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing here from our speech. The law of the Lord is perfect. 
perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making it wise to sing. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are clear, and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and the drippings of the honey. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can understand what's my prayers? Clear me from the cross. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of your transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Thank you. I invite you to uh, turn to the uh, opening hymn, which is number 496 in the red hymn. It's a sweet hour of prayer. Uh, Heidi, can I marry you, Heidi Wagner? Please. Yeah, if you don't mind, please.
Thank you. It's time to invite our children to come. If they would come and sit in the uh, front two pews, that would be great. So we hope and pray that he's at peace now, but also smiling down on all that we do here today. Amen. It's great to see you here today on this day. I think we need to begin by learning a little bit about some of the words and phrases we say on Talk Like a Pirate Day. If you agree, say, aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. You all can join me too. Say, aye, aye, Captain. So the first thing we remember is when we agree with someone, say, I. I. Ooh, that was a little late. <laughs> say, I. I. And when we disagree with someone, you say, nay. Nay. Awesome. And when you see something that you really are amazed at, you say, shiver me timbers. Or you say, well, blow me down. Blow me down. And when you greet someone else, don't just say hi or bye. You say, ahoy there, matey. Ahoy there, matey. Pay no attention to Bob. <laughs> Sometimes Bob is shy and he likes to play possum. It's okay, Bob. <laughs> And one last thing, when you know not what else to say, you always say, R. R. All right. Anybody here want to try their best pirate voice? Step right up to the microphone, there, your son. <laughs> Pull this down up. You're going to stay there. Yes, you can. Ahoy, matey. There she goes. Arr! Very good. Awesome. Anybody else want to try talking like a pirate here at this point? Anybody out there, too? Well, I hope the rest of the day you try to practice your pirate talk. Aye, sir? Aye. Aye. So I think it's time for a couple of pirate jokes. I had a little trouble last night. My eyesight's getting a little poor, and I need my glasses and not the patch, but I'll try my best. Um, so, what do you call a pirate who skips school? Captain Hooky! <laughs> and what did the pirate say on his 80th birthday? Do you know? R? R? <laughs> he probably said that too. But he said, I, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> little slow. <laughs> R? And then, why does it take so long for pirates to learn the alphabet? 
because they are days at sea. A, B, C. Woo, tough crowd. Finally, what did the doctor say to the pirate? He said, open wide and say, Arr! Give me a Arr! I had some advice just the other day from one of the sea dogs that I ran into who said to me, when ye are buying your grub, never buy sweet corn that's $12 a dozen. I said, why? And he said, because it's pirate corn. It's a buccaneer. <laughs> Arr! <laughs> now I hear ye all like to sing, right? Oh yes, ye all like to sing. Me first mate is not here today, Ian. But Ian suggested we try some traditional songs like how great thou art, <laughs> or are ye able? But I said, no, I want to teach a song. And so I'm going to teach ye a song on this day. It's entitled, Over the Deep Blue Sea. And it goes like this. I want you to join me, everybody, please. When I, oh, no, let me start again, okay? <laughs> Twas a sunny day when I went to play down by the sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, ready, here we go, this is the chorus. We're going this way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. Let's try that chorus all together. We're going this way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. Twas a rainy day when I went to play down by the sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, you ready? We're going this way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. Twas a windy day when I went to play down by the sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, We're going this way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. Twas a snowy day when I went to play down by the sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, we're going this way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. Last verse. I know you guys are excited about that. <laughs> Twas a stormy day. Rather stormy, thank you, Dr. She. <laughs> when I went to play down by the sea. I climbed aboard a pirate ship, and the captain said to me, We're going this way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. This way, that way, forward, backward, up and down, up and down, over the deep blue sea. This way, that way, forward, backward, by the way, I can't remember the song. <laughs> Thing before you all go, I think you would look good in some pirate garb yourself. I? Let me look in my booty here and see if I can find anything. Ah, a vast. We think you like, will this like this? 
It's a buccaneer hat for each of you. <laughs> well, come get it. Come get it. That way we're on camera here. Make sure Stephen gets one too, please. I have a great day on Talk Like a Pirate Day. Bob's okay. <laughs> Rest easy, Bob. I think I'll keep the sash. <laughs> Hi there, matey. Um, actually, uh, need to share with you that uh, Ed Giles' uh, daughter was here last night for our worship service. I had sent a card to uh, Ed's wife letting her know what we were doing, and uh, the daughter came uh, last night. And so I was <laughs> glad to uh, celebrate uh, with uh, them and to uh, have uh, that opportunity to remember and honor. And as well. All right, what's next? Prayer? Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, as we go to the uh, time of prayer, uh, several prayer requests uh, to share with you. Um, I want to begin uh, with that which is uh, just most uh, pressing for all of us. Um, so, last night, uh, Jim Barto uh, passed away very suddenly. And um, our prayer today is uh, for uh, Madeline and for all of the uh, family and friends. Um, Madeline just called me right before the worship service uh, just to let me know that uh, Jim was an organ donor and so some of his organs are being harvested at this time. And uh, uh, she is uh, happy about that, uh, that that was another way that uh, Jim always gave. So. So we uh, celebrate uh, that on this day and uh, certainly pray for uh, Madeline and family moving forward and uh, we'll be sharing as much information as we can when we find out uh, what the arrangements uh, will be. We also uh, continue to pray on this day for others who have experienced loss, uh, the D. Pry family, the Josh Greathouse family, Father Graham Cliff family and the Jim Eakey family. We also uh, pray for those who have experienced loss in any way, uh, those uh, who are battling COVID, uh, those who have experienced the effects of hurricanes and uh, wildfires. Uh, we pray for all who have experienced any loss. I want to share them too uh, in uh, several joys. Uh, the uh, we had a sea dog that turned 80 years old uh, Friday. It was his birthday, I believe. Uh, Bucky Jacoby uh, celebrated his 80th birthday. I did tell him that the joke yesterday. I'm not sure that he understood it, though. But anyway, you can explain it to him later, I guess. So, uh, but uh, Bucky celebrated with a party at the uh, fellowship hall yesterday. Happy birthday to him. Sarah Femay's birthday is actually uh, today. Uh, so we uh, celebrate uh, Sarah's birthday. Uh, Joan and Richard Burdick, which would be Kim Reinert's parents, have a 60th wedding anniversary coming up in early October. Uh, prayers for them. Uh, Don Holdridge, uh, many of you uh, know some of Don's story. Uh, really, two years ago, uh, he was in the hospital and weren't sure if he was going to make it out. Uh, glory be to God, he's done really well. He uh, was working so hard to build up his own stamina so he could go west and hike, and he did that uh, just recently, and we celebrate uh, with uh, Don for that. Uh, my nephew, uh, Josh, and uh, his partner, Andrea, had their second child. Uh, joining older brother, Jarrison, is his younger brother, Jace, and we celebrate that. And then uh, Clarence Michaels was awarded a, uh, uh, received an award this past week. Uh, Clarence, as, you, as most of you know, uh, dedicates so much time to uh, the Legion, uh, to uh, the servicemen and women, and to our veterans. And he was honored uh, for all of that. And so we celebrate uh, with Clarence on this day. 
there are lots of other uh, folks that we need to uh, remember in uh, prayer. Uh, a couple I want to mention with surgeries coming up. Uh, Craig Williams, Debbie Wilk, and Danielle Seckel. That's uh, uh, Dan and Gail's uh, daughter. Um, please keep all of them in your prayers. Perhaps you have other prayer requests. I just encourage you in our time of prayer to feel free to lift up any joys or concerns you may have. Let's pray together. Lord God, we do give you thanks on this day for the many blessings that have come our way. Lord, there's so much we take for granted. Life. Health. Home. Friends. Family. Church. Community. Lord, we pray that we may take time each and every day of our lives to make a list of the blessings that we have. And Lord, to give you all the thanks and praise. Lord, as we gather on this day, we lift up to you in prayer all of those who have experienced loss. Lord, as a church family, our heart goes out to the Jim Bartow family. We pray for his spouse, Madeline Root, for the children, grandchildren, for all of the extended family. And Lord, for his church family, for we too are still dealing with the shock and Lord, we'll continue to experience that loss in the days and weeks to come. So speak to us that word of hope that we need to hear, even in the midst of difficult and trying times. Lord, that we've voiced many joys and shared in some concerns. There are others, Lord, that are on our hearts and minds on this day. And so hear us as we lift these prayers to you. Jerry Rankowitz, Chip Davis. We ask you to be with him and Josh today as they await their daughter to be born. Trish and Jay Pazokas. Lord God, for these and for so many other prayers that we voice within our hearts privately to you, help us to trust that you hear all and are already at work. Lord, we thank you that you are a healing God, a God who loves and cares for each of us, and a God who journeys with us just when we need you the most. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer that you have taught your disciples to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just a uh, thank you to uh, each.
each of you for your continued uh, prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. I certainly appreciate uh, all that you continue to do in ministry here in this place. And just a reminder about our monthly um, um, mission project. Uh, this month is the uh, uh, monies received for WRGN Radio, our uh, local uh, station that is a Christian broadcasting station. Um, again, any of the uh, gifts we receive will go towards their programming in weeks and years uh, to come. I believe we have some special music today.
The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Linda, Holly, Dr. C, thank you for your music, too. Thanks for reading, Linda. By the way, uh, if we could, uh, just following our worship service, get a picture with uh, the uh, Captain Barney boy, Bub, and all of the uh, folks with their pirate hats, if you don't mind, just after our worship service, please. Will you pause with me for a moment of prayer? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Stephen, if you would go to the first slide. Cute, cute otters, right? Uh, we see them at the different times, uh, lots of television programs with zoos and things like that. We see them playing in the water. Uh, they seem like uh, uh, just a great... Uh, Creatures. And yet, a friend of mine took this uh, photo just outside of these uh, cute otters' cage. It says, Careful, we bite. Just a word of warning uh, that goes that uh, they are dangerous because at times they bite. I sometimes wonder if this warning should be placed outside of our own doors in the office workplace school home church for at times we bite we use our mouths for ill I love this passage from James. It's uh, rather humbling and challenging and yet direct. The author of James recognizes the potential impact that the tongue can have. The author warns the readers about how they use their tongues. Go to the next slide, Stephen. Has your tongue ever gotten you in trouble? Have you ever used words as a weapon meant to hurt others or seek revenge? Have you ever said something to one person about another person that you later regret? Have you ever quickly responded to someone else and said something that you know you shouldn't? sure most all of us could answer yes to at least one of the above questions at some point in time in our lives. And I'm also sure that we are aware of at least one instance in our own lives where someone hurt us because of the words they shared. Or at least another time when we hurt someone else with the words we've said. You see, words can hurt. And that's why I've never really understood the saying that most of us were taught when we were younger. Say it along with me. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. On one level, I understand that. Uh, 
physically no damage is caused by words or names, but emotionally I don't buy it. And try using this saying, six and seven will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Try using this adage to a student of color in a university setting being called nigger. An adolescent female with weight issues being called tubby. An immigrant laborer of Middle Eastern descent being called towhead or terrorist. A teen struggling with self-esteem issues being called loser or waste of space. A Down syndrome adult being called retard. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And it moves well beyond name calling. We can go to the next slide, Stephen. How about when we use words for slander, gossip, rumors, lies, criticism, judgment? Cursing, backbiting. You see, words do have power. The tongue can be a fire. And we've witnessed this in our own personal lives, where longtime friendships have ended because of something that someone said. Marriages engagements, relationships broken because of hurtful words. Or one of the saddest things that I do as a pastor, conduct a funeral service where a family is divided. Someone holding a grudge because of something that may have been said even years before. And sadly, it happens much more often than not. Well, regrettably, we witness this in the church, too. And if you doubt that, make contact with someone who has been inactive from the church for a number of years. And one of the most oftentimes cited reasons is that someone else said something about them or about one of their family members or loved ones. I've heard numerous stories like this in congregations over the years. Or perhaps a first-time visitor who refuses to return to that congregation because of con conversations they overheard from one church member talking to another church member about another church member or complaining about something related to the church. Negativity is not attractive at all. Or how about church leaders who decide not to continue in their current roles because of some of the criticism voiced about them during a meeting, or worse yet, afterwards in what we know as the dreaded parking lot meeting. You know what I mean, right? After the meeting, the folks that gather outside of their cars and continue the meeting for another hour or so. Or another example of where it has harmed the church, a newer phenomenon, Church members exchanging unhelpful texts, emails, or worse yet, posts on Facebook or Twitter. You see, in situations like all of the above, words can be damaging. And this is not what community is all about. This is certainly not what Christian community is is all about. Situations like these break down trust, cause hurt, and I believe become a very poor example 
of Christ's love in our lives. For the author of the book of James, this is not a consistent witness. For if we profess Christ as our Lord and Savior, then our actions and our words should reflect the presence of Christ as well. Can I get an eye for that? Here's the good news, folks. The good news is that the opposite of all of this is, is true, too. For words can help heal. Words can create community. Words can make a difference in our relationships with others. If they're encouraging words, compliments, apologies, only positive words about the ministry of the church. We just spent five weeks in our month of vision. Stephen, if you go to the next slide. One of the weeks we spent looking at the word encouragement, which I might add was our greatest strength as a congregation. And you see here some of the words that were shared. Uplift, listen, care for, accompany, cheerleader, you can do it, hope, bolster, stand behind, helping hand, reassurance, and the list goes on and on. These are the ways we use words. To build up and to encourage each other. Can you imagine if this was our language each and every day of our lives? What a difference that would make. Folks, we all need to learn the power of pause. P-A-U-S-E. In other words, before we speak, before we react, before we send a text or an email or a post on Facebook, pause. First, consider our witness. Ask ourselves, how are we using our words? Are they to harm? Or to heal? And will what we say help draw anybody closer in their relationship with Jesus? And if the answer to that is no, then by all means, don't speak. Don't email. Don't text. Don't post. But remember that other old adage that most of us learned as kids. If you don't have something good to say, say nothing at all. Our tongues, are they a blessing to God and to others? Or are they a curse? Are our tongues a fire? Or are our tongues an instrument used by God to draw others into a relationship with Jesus? There's a story that's told about a man who came to a rabbi and said, Oh, rabbi, I have done wrong. I have slandered my friend. I have told lies about him. I have spread rumors. But now I am sorry for what I have done and what I have said. I've gone to my friend to tell him how sorry I am and to ask his forgiveness. And out of the goodness of his heart, he has forgiven me. But now I have to seek forgiveness from God for breaking God's commandments. And so I've come to you, my teacher, to ask, 
How can I be forgiven by God for slandering and gossiping about my friend? The rabbi looked thoughtfully at the man, and then he said, Do you see that feather pillow over there on that bed? Take that pillow and go into the center of town, and then cut the pillow open and let all of the feathers fly to the wind. That will be your punishment for what you have done, for the ill words you have spoken. Well, the man was quite puzzled by the rabbi's instructions, but he did just as he was told. He took the feather pillow into the center of town, cut it open, and watched as the feathers all flew away in the wind. And then he returned to the rabbi and said, I've done just as you told me. I took the feather pillow to the center of town, cut it open, and watched as the feathers flew to the wind. Now am I forgiven for slandering and gossiping about my friend? To which the rabbi replied, No. No, you are not forgiven yet, for you have fulfilled only half of your task. First you let the feathers fly to the wind. Now go out and collect every feather that flew away. Our tongues can be a fire. They can be used to curse. But they can also be used to be a blessing. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day and for this opportunity to worship you. Lord, we thank you for this challenge that comes to us from James on this day too. To think about our own words, to think about our own witness, and Lord, to be a positive witness for you. And so change us where you have to. Help us to seek forgiveness where we need to. But help us, Lord, to speak positively about you, your message, and about the church to which you challenge. For these things, Lord, we do ask in your name. Amen. Our closing hymn, appropriately enough, is uh, Lord, speak to me. Uh, we are going to, it's on the the Red Mills, number 463. I invite you to join me in singing.
go now knowing that as we leave this place, God goes with us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, together all God's people said, I. That's all said as we uh, hear our host live here today. Go in peace, ready to serve our God.